womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Let us pray. O God, His only begotten Son, by His life, His death, and His resurrection, has purchased for us the rewards of eternal salvation. Grant we beseech you that meditating upon these mysteries of the Most Holy Rosary of the Blessed Virgin Mary, that we may imitate what they contain and obtain what they promise through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may divine assistance remain always with us, and may the souls of our dear faithful departed rest in eternal peace. Amen. Thank you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
I invite you to stand and pray the Angelus with me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. And the word was made flesh. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. You're welcome to the Church of the Immaculate Conception, where we continue our novena in honor of our patron, and welcome to you two joining us on the internet and Facebook it's great to see the numbers present in the church increasing. Uh, we can accept up to 50% now of capacity, so there are no real restrictions except to remember social distancing and wearing masks. That's the last remnant until October or November when all restrictions will be lifted. But we gather in faith. We gather to make our petitions to our patron. We gather to celebrate God's goodness to us in the Eucharist. And in the first reading, St. Paul, writing to the Colossians, encourages us to be firm in our faith. It says, be rooted in Christ, be built on Christ, be firm in faith in Christ, because there is no other by which we can be saved. In Christ nailed to the cross, all our debt has been cancelled. And so we gather in gratitude for God's love manifested to us in the life and death and resurrection of Christ. As we gather to offer our offerings round the altar, we're conscious that we still have needs. And one of those needs is forgiveness for our failures. So to prepare ourselves to celebrate Mass worthily this afternoon, 
let's confess our sins once more and ask forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously on your beloved sons and daughters that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. You must live your whole life according to the Christ. You have received Jesus the Lord. You must be rooted in him and built in him and held firm by the faith you have been taught and full of thanksgiving. Make sure that no one traps you and deprives you of your freedom by some second-hand, empty, rational philosophy based on the principles of this world instead of in Christ. In his body lives the fullness of divinity, and in him you too find your own fulfillment in the one who is the head of every sovereignty and power. In him you have been circumcised, with circumcision not performed by human hand, but by the complete stripping of your body of flesh. This is circumcision according to Christ. You have been buried with him when you were baptized, and by baptism too you have been raised up with him through your belief in the power of God who raised him from the dead. You were dead because you were sinners and had not been circumcised. He has brought you to life with him. He has forgiven us all of our sins. He has overridden the law and canceled every record of the debt that we had to pay. He has done away with it by nailing it to the cross. And so he got rid of the sovereignties and the powers and paraded them in public behind him in his triumphal procession. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. How good is the Lord to all. How good is the Lord to all. I will give you glory, O God, my King. I will bless your name forever. I will bless you day after day and praise your name forever. How good is the Lord to all. The Lord is kind and full of compassion, slow to anger, abounding in love. How good is the Lord Compassionate to all his creatures. How good is the Lord to all. And your creatures shall thank you, O Lord. And your friends shall repeat their blessing. 
They shall speak of the glory of your reign and declare your might, O God. How good is the Lord to all. Let us rise to greet the gospel. chose you from the world to go out and to bear fruit, fruit that will last. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus went out into the hills to pray, and he spent the whole night in prayer to God. When day came, he summoned his disciples and picked out twelve of them. He called them apostles. Simon, whom he called Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon called the Zealot, Judas, son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. He then came down with them and stopped at a piece of level ground where there was a large gathering of his disciples with the crowd of people from all parts of Judea and from Jerusalem and from the coastal region of Tyre and Sidon, who had come to hear him and to be cured of their diseases. People tormented by unclean spirits were also cured, and everyone in the crowd was trying to touch him, because power came out of him that cured them all. The Gospel of the Lord. I'm sure you're sick and tired of me talking about the ministry of Jesus. But that's what the gospel is all about. Why he came and how he worked in preaching and teaching, in healing. He came to reveal God's love for all people. And the power that kept him going was prayer. In the Gospels, we read that whenever he was about to make a very important decision or to move on to a new area, he prayed. And here in the Gospel, we hear that he prayed all night before he chose the twelve apostles. These are the ones who would be sent to spread the good news. These would be the pillars on which Christ would build his church, his new people of God. And he prayed to the Father all night before making that important choice. I'm sure most of you have mobile phones. Does, does everybody have a mobile phone now? And do you have to recharge it every day? If you don't recharge your mobile, it goes flat and it won't work. Prayer is the charging of our lives. It's through prayer that we can carry out our vocation in life. And it was through prayer with the Father that Jesus too could get the power to continue his ministry. 
And that power even flowed out of him. People wanted to touch, touch him, to, to, just to be close to him, to listen to him. Why did they come? To hear what he had to say and to be cured of their diseases. That's why they came to Jesus. They recognized that they were broken and weak and sick and in need of healing. And they came to the great physician who was powered by the prayer, by the time he spent with the Father, all night in this case. We don't look on prayer as an optional extra or icing on the cake. It's the very ingredient of the cake. Without prayer, we will not be able to be followers of Christ we will not be able to live what we have called to do. We too are sent like the apostles to spread the good news, to bring hope to other people, to bring comfort and healing to other people. We too are apostles. We have been called in baptism so that we are sent even at the end of Mass, we say, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. We're sent out to bring that good news to others. So let's make prayer an essential part of our lives. As we plug in the mobile to recharge overnight, let's plug in again. Without a connection to God in prayer, there will be no power to fulfill our ministry or our vocation in life. Caring for others is an essential part of what we have been called to do. Called, as St. Paul said to the Corinthians, the Colossians there, called to be rooted in Christ, to build our lives on Christ, and to grow in faith in Christ. Not some worldly philosophy but on the person of Christ to develop our relationship with him and through him with the Father and to care for all people. As you were coming into the church today perhaps you saw leaflets there in the porches and cultivating hope. This is a season of caring for creation. This whole month of September that leads up to the feast of St. Francis on the 4th of October. And in that, there's a lot of food for thought. So I'd encourage you, first of all, to take a leaflet and to read it. There's very little we can do as individuals, but collectively, our efforts will make a big difference. Perhaps you would choose one of the suggestions in the leaflet, one or two of the suggestions, and make that a concrete reality in your lives. Do that, and you will be contributing to our common home, because we are all interdependent. Our brothers and sisters who are not only human but also the inanimate brothers and sisters, the whole environment, all of creation. That is our common home, one world we live in and we have a co-responsibility for each other and for that environment. It's like a, a web. What happens in one area affects another area. So just take one or two of them. I won't read them out. You'll have them on the leaflet. But together we can all become more conscious of our responsibility for others. Together we can pray that we will be motivated to work not only for our own good, but for the good of all that share this common home of God's creation. And then when we come to the feast of St. Francis, 
the saint who is closely associated with the relationship with all the brothers and sisters created by God, we too will be able to make a difference, small as it may be, but together as a people of God, as one's faithful followers of Christ, then we will be able to contribute to the well-being and the preservation of all God's gift to us in all of his creatures. So in faith, let's stand and make our prayer. Gathered together in prayer to the Father with Jesus in this Mass, we gladly bring him our needs and our concerns for ourselves and for others. We pray for the apostles today, especially the Pope, bishops, priests, and missionaries, that they may be reaffirmed in their vocations and strengthened in their ministry. Lord, hear us. That we may all know and share in the power of Jesus at work in the church and the world today, healing the illnesses of poverty, injustice, division, and materialism, which cripple our world. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the sick, the old and the lonely among us, that they may receive comfort and strength from those around them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. That we may be a people of prayer who find time for God in our busy lives and so hold firm the faith we have received and pass it on to the next generation. Lord, hear us. For all who have been apostles for us, living or dead, we pray for our parents, teachers, friends, and strangers. May they experience the richness of God's kindness. Lord, hear us. And some of we remember some of the petitions sent in to us for St. Anthony. I pray for a lad who will pass his course. He needs this uh, for his self-esteem and to rebuild his confidence. Please pray for me uh, that I don't get into trouble in work. Take care of my children, grandchildren, and all my family. Prayers are needed for the return to health. I request your help on finding a little home for us it has caused so much pain, and I've lost all my confidence by feeling like nobody after what was done to us. So with all my strength, I pray and hope that you will hear me, St. Anthony. Please pray for my husband. He's depressed because he doesn't have any work to do. Dear St. Anthony, please help me to gain my self-confidence back in my job and perform it without wasting time. Please pray for my daughter with her drug addiction. Thank you for all the blessings and favors received. I ask you simply for peace of mind regarding my health issues. Please help my friend. She's bought a house, but the neighbors are very bad. Please help her to cope with this situation. For unity in our home, please help a lady to find her mother's will as she's very stressed about it. Uh, please help my, all my depression and anxiety and overthinking and worrying that, that all may go away. Uh, Pray for my wife she start, that she starts to feel better and lose weight as she is very down in herself. Please pray that my husband and myself stop arguing. For, thank you, Anthony, for protecting my husband. Uh, last week when he had a mini stroke, he's making a good recovery. And Anthony, please help with God's grace that this anxiety and panic attacks I have been suffering from will soon go away. 
We pray for these and all your petitions as we say through the intercession of St. Anthony, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. God, our Father, these are the prayers of your children who are your beloved, are beloved to you in your Son. We present them to you in full joy and confidence through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <laughs> o God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mysteries, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him with great goodness you formed it in you. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, and all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, 
which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. Save us, Savior of the world. For by his death and resurrection. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Anthony, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, together with your servant, Pope Francis, our Bishop Dermot, with all other bishops, priests, deacons, religious, and the entire people you have gained for your very own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O oh merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed sisters and brothers, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we too hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Like the deer that yearns for running streams, so my soul is yearning for you, my God. My soul is thirsting for God, the living God.
Let us pray. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and the heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Together now we say our novena prayer to our patron. Come, Holy Spirit, creator blessed, and in our hearts take up your rest. Come with your grace and heavenly aid to fill the hearts which you have made. Saint Anthony, powerful in word and work. Saint Anthony, our patron and advocate. Saint Anthony, attentive to those who invoke you. Saint Anthony, whom the infant Jesus so much loved. O holy Saint Anthony, gentlest of saints, your love for God and charity for your neighbor made you worthy while on earth to possess miraculous powers. Miracles waited on your word, which you were ever ready to speak for those in trouble or anxiety. Encouraged by this thought, I implore of you to obtain for me my request. The answer to my prayer may require a miracle, even so you are the saint of miracles. O gentle and loving Saint Anthony, whose heart was ever full of human sympathy, intercede for me, and the gratitude of my heart will ever be yours. Amen. And to the Lord be with you. May the Lord bless you and take you into his keeping. May he show you his countenance and take pity on you. May he turn his eyes towards you and give you his peace. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.